Tuesday during your lunch time. So bless God for you joining us. We pray that something will be said that will be a blessing to you, that will be strength to you, that will open up your eyes and say, ah, I got an aha moment. Amen. So invite someone to join us. You know, it's amazing when I look at Facebook, we're talking. And some of the words just does not come out the way we're saying them. <laughs> Have you noticed? Oh, I noticed. What we just said. <laughs> we bless God again for PIT, which is Pastor in Training, for those who don't know. PIT, Vicki Gatlin, who is joining me. She's been my co-host for a while, and I'm going to make her the co-host so that if there's anybody trying to get on, but she's been my co-host for a while. Amen. And we bless God for her joining Amen. us out of Savannah, Georgia. Amen. Amen. I got to correct her name because sometimes it doesn't stay. Amen. So if you can invite someone to join us, do a watch party. I think that's what they say. It's 12.02. Mm -hmm. um, in a few moments, we're just really going to get started. I don't want to hold anyone up. Um, I don't know how to do watch parties, uh, PIT Vicky. So what I did was just copy the link over to my personal page. <laughs> I know how to do well, that quite well. Yes. The only thing, they don't do watch parties anymore, but you can share down there where the comments are. That's you can hit I the did. share button and you can share it to your page. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just copied the link and moved on. So we're going to go on and get started. So we bless God for those of you that are with us today. We can't see your names, but we know you're there. Amen. So we bless Amen. God for that. We're going to move forward. Um, I'm going to ask Pastor in training, PIT Vicky, if she will give us an opening prayer. And I'm just excited to get started on today. Amen. Lord, we just give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, Lord, for just getting us through this day so far. Thank you for all the many blessings that you have stored upon us. Father, we pray right now that you will humble our hearts, O oh Heavenly Father, and that you will prepare our minds to be able to receive the word that you have for today. Father, I know we're talking about faith, O oh Heavenly Father, and I pray that as we continue to talk about faith, everybody can see where they are and be receptive and be willing to grow. Thank you for our apostle, Heavenly Father, and we pray that you would just continue to bless her as well. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, guys, I bless God for uh, PIT Vicky because mm -hmm. she's joining us from work. Amen. <laughs> she takes her lunch break to come on. Amen. She's got this summer gig going. I know she don't mind me saying it. She's got this no, summer gig fine. going at the, uh, uh, the Salvation Army. Salvation Army. There summer camp for kids. The what? The Salvation Army Summer Camp for Kids. The Summer Camp for Kids. So that's a blessing, amen, that she's doing that. We didn't do that this year at the church. So it's a blessing that someone is still doing it. Good to see your daughter, Tamika. So guys, we're going to get started. Last week, um, we started talking, well, week before last, we started talking about being unshakable. Um, and we've covered a lot. Um, I just want to always start out with the definition where it talks about 
being unshakable. It means being on a firm foundation. It means uh, being unwavering. unwavering. It means knowing that you are sure, your mind is fixed, you're secure, you're constant, you're absolute. Amen. Uh, you're steadfast, you're immovable, no matter what's going on. Amen. Mm -hmm. So a lot Amen. of times when people don't really understand what being unshakable is, then they're like, well, I'm okay. Well, my thing is this, no matter what you've got going on, if you have found yourself being shaken to the core by saying something like, oh, I'm not sure. Why did that happen? Uh, what's going on? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous now. I'm being moved outside of where I know God had me at. If that's you, that means that you're really not unshakable because when you're unshakable, it doesn't matter what happens in your life. <laughs> it won't mm -hmm. move you. What do you think about that, P.I.T. Vicky? <laughs> that is so true. And a lot of us think we're there, but we're not. Whenever we get that challenge, you know, we'd be like, oh, start to panic. But if we just remember that, you know, God is with us and God is going to pull us through it, yes. then that will help us anchor our, I think it will help us throw that anchor out there and knowing that it's going to be deep and it's not going to pull us away from God. He is our anchor. Yes. As long as we remember that, we should be okay. But sometimes we do panic. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> we do we do lose our faith in it, even if Amen. it's just for a second. It happens to most of us. It does happen to the most of us and the best of us. Amen. Mm -hmm. I hope you all are understanding that to the best of <laughs> us. So if you find yourself being lost or having a loss or doubt or disappointment, feeling betrayed or discouraged, please don't allow it to shake your foundation. Your foundation should be so sure. It'd be like the, the, uh, where the Bible talks about someone built a house on sand. And as mm -hmm. soon as the wind came and it blew it, the house fell down. But if you build it on a strong and sure foundation, it doesn't matter how much wind comes, whether it's in a loss or a disappointment, or when you're discouraged, it doesn't matter how much wind comes. If there's a diagnosis, a sickness, it doesn't matter what. That's saying you're not going to be shaken no matter what's being done or said. Good to see you, daughter, to, uh, daughter uh, Michelle. Amen. So we, um, I don't want to go all the way back to two weeks ago, but we talked about being unshakable during persecution. We talked about being unshakable during temptation. We talked about being unshakable in our faith, which is where we are now. Amen. So we've got to make mm -hmm. sure we are not shaken in our faith. Um, I told you guys last week that there's a thin line between fear and faith. And a lot of times it's like when you walk on a tightrope, a lot of times you say you're okay. But as soon as something happens, you look down when you walk in that tightrope and you're like, oh my gosh. I was going to take this one thing to make me fall. But that tells me there's a thin line between fear and faith because in your life, because if, it, if it, you didn't have that thin line, it wouldn't matter what you see when you look down. Your first mindset is going to be, let me keep moving. And P.I.T. Vicky part of the thing about when you're walking on those, um, those broken wood pieces going across a bridge. She said, it rocks. But if you keep your foot, what did you say on that piece of wood? On both, planted on both sides of the wood. Yes. You're not going down. Yes. <clears throat> so I hope you all got that. <clears throat> so then we also started talking about, when we said a thin line between fear and faith, we began to talk about different levels of faith. Amen. Different levels of faith. And then we'll pull everything else in. We started talking about this level of faith called um, uh can not find my own paper? <laughs> Weak faith. That was the first one we started talking about. Then I put the other stuff in about why we're talking about this. Uh, we started talking about weak faith. That was having no hope. And I gave you all the scripture of Romans 4 and 19. And I know if you're working or you're driving, you might, you might not be able to write it down. But you can always come back to look at all of our fresh oils because they're on our fresh oil site, our personal page my personal page the ministry page and it's also now on our youtube page so i download i upload it to our youtube page as well so you got three places that you can go and go back and keep listening until you get all the information that you need we started talking about that weak faith as i said not having any hope 
and we talked about where with Abraham and them, they had no hope because of his age and his wife, but God was ready to bless them with the child. So then we went to temporary faith, uh, not being convinced going back and forth. You want to quickly, quickly give them one scenario of that, uh, PIT, Vicki? Um, I, I, I don't remember. I, okay, I remember where we were talking about, um, somehow we were talking about the oceans, the two different oceans lining up and you'll be able to, to distinguish the difference between the two. Okay. And you have to be at that point where you're sure that you're going to be in the Atlantic Ocean, or are you sure you're going to be in the Pacific Ocean? Because there is a line there to distinguish the two. When we talk about temporary, you got to know whether your faith is temporary or whether it is firm and strong. And that temporary faith is where you be, you know, kind of you're on one side one day and you're on the other side yes. the other day. You got to make a, a firm decision of where you're going to move towards in terms of your faith. Yes, yes, yes. I think the key word was doubting is what I believe we said. Okay, doubting, yes, temporary faith was that doubting faith, going back and forth faith, uh, that thing that have you wavering, have you wavering. And I know we've all been there. Uh, you get a diagnosis. I, my, my, I God bless my aunt. She's gone on to be with the Lord about two years now. I remember my mom and them saying that she came to her house one day and said that the doctor said she was dying and she didn't have long to live. And uh, I remember calling my aunt that same night or the next night. Long story short, my aunt kept her, she kept saying to me, you know, I'm tired, Gail, I'm ready to go. But then on the other hand, I'm ready to go, I'm afraid. You know, I don't know what's going to happen. But she said, I got faith to believe that God can heal me, but my body says otherwise. And what we have to understand is when you have that temporary faith, you can't waver. Either you're going to believe God or you're not. You know, you, and you have to be like, Paul, you're going to believe God to the end. Even if you close your eyes and die, guess what? That, that faith still says, okay, I still didn't wait, but I still trust that God, this is just the way he chose to do this thing right here. Does that make sense, P.I.T., what do you think about that? That, I mean, that's, that, that is firm. <laughs> that is firm right there. I mean, you're talking about being solid foundation. That is being assured. That is absolutely knowing yes. that he is in control. And you got enough faith to know that he is in control. And no matter where he take you, everything is going to be good. Everything's going to be all right. Amen. So then we started talking about, um, we started talking about, uh, okay. And I gave you all the scripture for one of that, but one of those temporary faith is in Isaiah 57 verse 20. That says, um, when you hope on one hand and have the fear of not receiving on the other hand. So I'm here to tell you, I don't care what's going on. I got the faith to believe if God said he's going to do it, I'm not going to allow fear to shake me. Uh, so then we went on to talk about active faith, because I'm not sure the way I stopped that. I, I know we went past active faith. Then we talked about active faith. I don't want to say it because I believe we did talk about it. Believing, mm -hmm. then doing something about it, which means you got to do something about it. Then we started talking about drop strong faith, being totally convinced. The Bible says in Romans 4, 21, being fully persuaded that what God pro has promised, he also would be able to perform it. Did we go there? Did we ever get there? We no, did. we didn't. We, we were supposed to start with strong faith. So okay. you're, on the, you're on a good part. Okay. Okay. Guys, thank y'all for letting me do a, a recap here. So strong faith, being totally convinced. Romans 4, 21, I see again, being fully persuaded that what God has promised he is able to perform it. Think about it like this, guys. God promised you something. He promised you he's going to heal people in your family. He promised that he was going to heal your body, your mind. He promised that he was going to open up a door, give you a home. He made a promise that he was going to bring your kids back together. He made a promise that he's going to, to, to bless you financially. He made a promise that he's going to give you the desires of your heart. So if God has made a promise to you, you got to walk in strong faith that says, I am fully persuaded that whatever God said he was going to do, he's going to do it. We, there's a scripture that talks about he who begun again work, begun a good work in you. He is faithful mm -hmm. to complete. Y'all better hear me. When you got strong faith, you got to know that he is faithful and God is not a God that he can should lie. What do you think, uh, P.I.T.? 
I, I, I mean, this is just solely true. If I can relate it to myself, um, I remember about 10 to 15 years ago, I was, I had an issue. They sent me to uh, the Mayo Clinic. The Mayo Clinic doctors uh, gave me a diagnosis and I guess they didn't, they were shocked at my response because God had already shown me where I was going, what I was going to be ordained to do. All right. As long as I walk it through. And so yeah. when I got the diagnosis, I was like, okay, thank you. Because in my mind, I was thinking, this is what you're saying, but this is not what God is saying. Yes. They were saying, oh, well, you know, this could lead to death. Well, we're dying every single day, right? <laughs> Whatever God call us, that's where we're going to, that's, that's when we're going to leave. But until then, we have to continue to walk out each day. And then they were, they were giving me all this other stuff, but they were really shocked at my response. And I just said, thank you for letting me know what you think my diagnosis is. Yes. Here I am 10, 15 years later, I'm still alive. Things are still going well. And I've not allowed even hearing about that yes. to stop me from doing what God has told me to do because I got a strong faith. I know where God is taking me. I know what he wants me to do. Yes. I am moving forward towards it. And I'm not laying what, letting what somebody else say yes. pull me back or hold me back. I am being pushed forward by my faith yes. that God is going to bring me to it. If he's ordained it, he's going to bring me to it and he's going to bring me through it. So we got to yes. stop listening to what everybody else is saying or stop yes. listening to our own minds, you know, giving bad thoughts or, you know, just because you had a bad day, the world has come to the end. The world is still going to rotate whether we're in it or not. That's right. As long as God is, has allowed it to happen. Yes. So we got to have that strong faith to know what God has ordained for our lives. Yes. And once we got that, we are good. We are on the right track. Amen. Nothing can shake us. Good to see you, Sister Nothing. Gail. Amen. I switched over to another site, so I was able to see who else was on. So when it comes to that strong faith, that was that was great, uh, P.I.T. Vicky, because we all have had diagnosis that we've said, mm -mm, I hear you, but I hear God. Amen. Amen. Um, so this kind of faith causes you to be totally convinced of God's word. Nothing can shake you. Nothing can stop you. Um, having that full assurance, that's just like with Caleb and Joshua. In Numbers 13, they were uh, going to enter the land of the promise, and they went in boldly. Mm -hmm. They had no fear. They had mm -hmm. no trembling. And the enemy stepped in and began to talk to the other people, and he they bought it, and, and the enemy bought about all of this other stuff. Caleb had so much faith that he said, you know what? Come on, we can do this. We can take this land. We don't have to worry about that. Y'all hear what I just said? And a lot of times, even at the end of this story, uh, he has so much faith to believe that at the end of it all, when they got, when he got to the promised land, he said, now give me what's mine. Give me what God has promised me. I don't care about how many doubters came near me. I don't care how much their faith was shaken. They may not be here to see it, but I'm here to see the promises of the Lord. Y'all hear what I just said. So don't, you make sure your faith is strong so that it doesn't matter how many people are on board with you. You just better mm -hmm. keep trusting God. He said, you know what? My faith is so strong. I don't have time to do to the other 10. I don't have none of that. I can't hear any of that right now. Y'all hear what I'm saying? That's why I started preaching that sermon on Sunday. I'm like, God, I have mercy. Come on, somebody. Are you really sure? <laughs> Are you serious about what God called you to? Are you sure? Oh, Lord, have mercy. That's a whole nother topic. <laughs> so we got to have strong faith, people of God. <laughs> Let's move Amen. on. Amen. <laughs> we want you guys to comment, please. I hadn't even listened to the word yet. I just heard what the, my topic was. And I said, okay, well, the Lord had a good time because I got to go hear the word too. So then we want to talk about uh, the, the fifth type of faith is that great faith. Now we've talked about weak faith, uh, temporary faith. Uh, we've talked about active faith, doing something, strong faith. Now, how about we talk about that great faith? Because our topic is being unshakable. But I want you guys to understand, we're not just talking about being unshakable in our faith. We're talking about being unshakable in anything. But if you have a thin mm -hmm. line between fear and faith, then no matter what comes, you're going to be shaken. Y'all hear what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So we're trying to help you with your faith so that no matter what comes, you'll, have to, you'll be able to stand in your faith. So great faith is speaking it without doubt. Ooh, y'all better catch that. Speaking it, proclaiming it, 
opening your mouth and saying something without doubting, it's a bad thing when, when, when you say something. As soon as you say it, and your, the Satan comes back and starts trying to mis- manipulate your mind and say, oh, no, mm-hmm. what do you think about that, P.I.T., before I even go any further? I, th- I think that is, uh, that is something that um, a lot of people um, live also. We've got to go into this thing. We've got to speak it, and we've got to believe it. When you were talking about Caleb, when he went in, he was looking for the positive because he yeah. knew that's where God had sent him. So he said, if my, you know, basically I'm paraphrasing, if my father sent me in here for a reason, there must be something good that's going to come out of it. So he went in looking for the good. The other ones went in looking, you know, looking for the negative, thinking negative. So we've got to speak this thing to bring it into existence. We got to, we got to um, trust and believe that, you know, this is what God <laughs> wants us to do or wants us to be then hey I, i've got great enough faith to know that it's going to happen you know mm-hmm. on the flip side of that and this might could be this some of you might think this is funny but on my birthday i went bike riding to jekyll island where the storm was coming through right and my husband said well we need to get there at a certain time or we're going to get rained out i said lord <laughs> surely you are not going to allow me to walk, to come here and, and get rained out on my birthday. So I got great enough faith, Lord, to know that you're going to hold back this rain so I can enjoy my day because as I'm riding my bike, I'm going to be singing and giving praises to you. All and right. guess what? It did not rain. There you go. It did not rain. So my faith was great enough <laughs> to hold back the rain. But I mean, on a serious note, though, um, that is a serious note. <laughs> we we got to speak it. If, if that's what we want, we got to speak it. As long as it's within God's will, he will allow it to happen. But we got to show him that we got great enough faith to make it happen. All right. Now, I got to go back to Caleb just for a minute so everybody can understand. When God told them to go into the promised land, it was all of those Israelites. Well, mind mm-hmm. you, after Joshua and them told them to go and look at the land, 10 came back negative. But what I have to make sure everybody understand, none of those people that were with Caleb and Joshua, none of them made it into the promised land. God allowed Mm -hmm. them to die out because their faith wasn't strong enough. Y'all hear what Mm -hmm. I'm saying? I'm not saying he's going to kill you, but I needed to know that they understood the rest of the story. None of those that, none of those that heard that, that heard the proclamation was to say that God said, go in. And see when he Moses told him to go in and see what the land was about. Joshua told him to go on in and look and see what the land was about. The thing is, all of them heard it, but none of them made it to the promised land because it, because they came back with a negative report. God couldn't allow them to go in because their faith wasn't strong enough to go in. So the new generation went in, but not the old generation. I just needed to say that, guys. So just understand, some of your friends that has been with you all this time. If their faith isn't as strong as yours, they may not go where you're going. Mm, that's a whole, oh, let me move on. Ooh. Anyway. <laughs> Ooh, that was good. That was good. Anyway, Matthew 8, 8 through 11, and in verse 13 and 15, it says, um, we talked about the centurion, so we did go there. And uh, where, where the centurion said, you know what? I have soldiers under me. He went to Jesus. I have soldiers under me. All I got to do is tell them to go, and they go. If I tell them to come, they come. I tell them to do something, and they do something. Jesus looked at him, and he said, you know what? I'm so marveled by your faith in a sense, your great faith in a sense, that guess what? He told the centurion, you go. And you have, uh, and, and as you believe, when you get home, your son will be still alive. Okay? Your son will be healed. So I say that to say this, guys, when you got to have such great faith that you got to speak that thing and then don't go back and curse yourself with the same thing. Amen? <laughs> you got to speak it and believe it, proclaim it. Amen. I said it's a thin line between fear and faith, but it's Amen. up to you. Uh, it goes on to say that, um, well, we talked about where it goes on to say that uh, when Jesus heard, he marveled and said to those who followed, truly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith. No, not in Israel. I needed to say that because it's in scripture, guys. Great faith is in scripture. Every one of these faith things that we're talking about is in the word. So let's talk about, it's 1225, let's talk about uh, being unshakable in our faith when we look at unfinished faith, being sincere, having complete confidence, because see, you can have great faith, but not have confidence, 
-hmm. Okay. Uh, so when you look at the word confidence, uh, PIT, tell me what you get from the word confidence. Confidence is finding the 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 strength, the option, or the just the comfort in knowing that what you're doing is going to work or what is being done is going to work or what God is doing is going to work, yes. you know, because confidence is something that I struggled in and I'm not going to lie every now and then I revert back, but God reminds me that I just need to have confidence in what I'm doing and move forward. Yeah. I can't worry about what everybody else think, what everybody else say. If it's there something he told me to do, step in it with confidence and do it. And he will bless it, even if it's only one person to be blessed yeah. by it. But think about it. When we first started Fresh Oil, <laughs> I'm just going to keep it real. Good to see you, um, <laughs> uh, Elder Vanessa. When we first started Fresh Oil, <laughs> I can't speak for PIT. I ain't have no confidence. I just woke up one morning and heard the Lord, and I'm like, Lord, now I preach. <laughs> but you want me to do a fresh or a live? You want me to get up there and Jesus. talk to the people like one on one? Really? Um, I don't have no confidence in that. But guess what? I realized I didn't have confidence in myself. And because I didn't have confidence in myself, I didn't have confidence in the God that's inside of me. Y'all hear what I just said? I, we didn't, I didn't have the confidence of God that was inside of me that said, come on, I need you to do this. Because I realized it wasn't about me. It wasn't about P.I.T. Mm -hmm. Nikki. It was about mm -hmm. all the people that this would reach. And then mm -hmm. when he said, start putting it on YouTube, I'm going somewhere with this guy. I'm like, oh, no, and we ain't ready for that. I'm not confident in what we're talking about. And the Lord dealt with me harshly. He said, if I said it, then you got to believe it. And that mm -hmm. was another reason why he said we needed to talk about this. We got to talk about being unshakable. We can't be mm -hmm. shaken by our fears and our doubts. We can't be shaken by what somebody may think or say. We can't be shaken by what, how we think it should go. We just should have enough faith and confidence to believe that if God said it, he's going to make sure it's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Come on, uh, Facebook, we, we want y'all to help comment with us. So when we look at uh, great faith, we got to make sure to understand that that man had the, he had full confidence in the ability of Jesus or what Jesus was going to do. Come on, how many of y'all got full confidence in what God's going to do? With all the promises he's made, I've got confidence. Before my dad died, the last day I saw him before he died, I had went to Wilson on a Sunday to take my wheelchair because he said, all I want to do is go outside and, and be in the sun without somebody carrying me. And when he came, when, when I remember, because I left the wheelchair there, but he told me before I left, he said, you know what? I believe God going to heal me. No matter what, I believe God going to heal me. And he, then he turned around and said, I'm going to be walking around heaven healed. Y'all hear what I just said? Well, I know my daddy has been healed. Y'all better hear me good. I know he's been healed. And what we got to understand is that we got to have such confidence to speak it and believe that it's going to be so. Did y'all hear mm -hmm. me? So let's talk about this unfinged faith right quick. Unfinged, U-N-F-I-N-G-E-D. Unfinged faith is, is being sincere, having complete confidence. First Timothy, I told y'all all of this is in the word. First Timothy 1 and 5. But the end of the commandment is love out of a pure heart and a good mm -hmm. conscience. Check this out and a good conscience and, and faith unfinged, faith unfinged, which means, catch what I'm about to say, we as people in our fleshly body, sometimes we place confidence in everything except God. Y'all better hear what I'm about to say. We place confidence in getting a paycheck every, every week or every month. We, we take, uh, we give confidence to, to uh, whether or not we sit in a chair and it's going to hold us up. Y'all better hear me good. We have so much confidence that when we sit down in a chair, that that chair is going to hold us up. We have confidence to believe that whatever pill we take and put in our mouth and swallow, we have enough confidence to believe and trust that it's going to heal us. Well, when we got that unfinished faith, that being sincere, having complete confidence, 
we got to have so much confidence in God, people of God, to say, you know what? I don't care how I'm being shaken. I don't care what's coming about. I don't care how it's coming about. I don't care what's being thrown at me. I've got, I'm, I have, I'm sincere in my faith right now. In my uh, PIT, question to you. Has God said something to you recently? And you, and, and you took it at face value. You didn't look down to see if it was going to hold up. Happened to me this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, being here dealing with the kids, um, I haven't dealt with kids, this many kids in a very, very long time. And it's a little bit of a rowdy bunch, okay? So God had asked, God had told me to come in anoint the building, walk around and play, pray yesterday. I got distracted and I forgot. So mm -hmm. the bunch was really, really, really rowdy. I think even more rowdy than I ever seen them. But he told me today, anoint the building, walk mm -hmm. around and pray and um, watch what he does. Did it first thing this morning. And it's just like a peace mm -hmm. has come over most of these kids, I've never seen them that calm. They've been very attentive. They've very, been very involved and they've not been as rowdy and out and with outbursts like they've done in, the, in before. So when he told me to anoint this building, I knew I had confidence that he was going to be in the midst and that his spirit was going to move and that he was going to bring that calmness that we currently have. And I also told that to my boss. So right. my boss, she said, she said, I had the same feeling. She said, so what I'm going to do, since you're going to do that, she said, when I gather them together this morning, we're going to pray. And she gathered them together to pray to start off the day. And the way God has moved as a result of us being, you know, being sincere about what God has told us to do has really paid off and made a change in the whole building. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. But isn't it amazing when we have that kind of faith to, not to be shaken by what we see in the routiness, but to have that faith in what God said he's going to do if we just be obedient. Amen. And I think a lot of times Amen. people people say, okay, God, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to have that unshakable faith that I'm going to do what you say, do God, and I'm going to trust that you're going to do it and you're going to be out and everything's going to be all right. But we have that faith, but then we take it back because mm -hmm. we start doubting if we don't see the positive. But sometimes God is just waiting to see just how strong your faith is going to be before he even moves. Y'all hear what I just said? He's waiting to see if you're going to be shaking in the midst of stuff or if you're going to keep trusting him before he moves. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 The next one is we got to be unshakable in our faith by having perfect faith. Perfect faith, having complete trust in Jesus who died for us. Look, the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, everybody know this scripture. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to our own understanding. Don't stop there, though. It says, in all our ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct our path. Trust in the Lord with all our heart. When you have perfect faith, you're going to keep trusting God with all your heart, despite of what you see, despite of what that is the enemy put in front of you, despite of how many roadblocks there are. You're going to trust God with all your heart. And a lot of times we say we trust God, P.I.T., and for those that are with us today, we say we trust God. But do you really trust him with all your heart? God, mm -hmm. I trust you just I see some, till I see something different. God, I trust you until I see something that I don't like. Come on, somebody. That's where people are. God, I'm going to trust you until I see something that I don't like. Look, when people, when people see people skydiving, jumping off uh, diving boards, even out of planes, people told me I was, told me I was crazy to jump out of an airplane. It did never, it did never dawn on me that I wasn't going to be okay. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. Y'all get what I'm saying. It didn't dawn on me, you know, that something was going to happen to me. I knew that I was going to hit the ground and I was going to be all right. But it's amazing to me that we can jump out of planes. We can see people skydiving. We can see people um, have these adrenaline, adrenaline rushes. We can see people run into, uh, run into uh, burning buildings with like the firemen. We can see people as we've gone to war, 
never doubting that we're not going to come home. Y'all hear what I just said? But when other things happen, when your adrenaline isn't flowing, I did say it, then we can't trust God. We can't have faith to believe that God's going to take care of us. Come on, talk to me right quick before I go on PIT and then those that are watching. I think complete trust in God is what is going to keep us from um, staying in our comfort zone because God didn't place us here to stay in a comfort zone and, mm -hmm. and to it, cause it's not all about us. He's placed us here to do his will. And a lot of times he has called us to do things, but we'll say to ourselves, oh, I'm not comfortable doing that. Oh, I'll, I'll never do that. I'm, I'm gonna always do this. And I, so we're not using that complete trust in God. And I mm. think we're losing out on our perfect faith because yeah. we want to be in what we call our safe zone. And I think we talked about this when we were in the other book. Yeah. I mean, you can't, you can't consider just sitting in your house doing nothing that's being safe. Because, you know, God could cause a tree to fall on your house and you might end up in the hospital for the tree hitting you. So, you know, no place is safe in our minds, but where God sent us should be what we think about as being our safe mm -hmm. place. And as long as we are, uh, you know, got that perfect faith that he's going to take us where we need to go and do what we need to do yeah. for his glory, then we are going to be okay because as long as we completely trust him but if we're doing stuff that that's out of his will that's a that's that's a, a whole different story but we got to have that perfect faith and know that although I don't like um although I don't like going outside on the playground with the kids it's a perfect opportunity for me to go out I mean because it's hot let's think about it I'm in Georgia it's hot out here it's a perfect opportunity, though, for me to get with the kids and talk to them one on one and show them the love of Christ. You know, talk about what what they're doing, how they're doing and give them a little boost to to help them jumpstart their day and start their day off right. So I got that perfect faith that while I'm out there, God is going to keep me cool. I am not even going to think about the heat because I'm going to be focused on ministering to one of those children while I'm standing out there. Yeah. So that to me is like having that perfect faith and just believing God is going, just trusting him that he's going to take care of us no matter what. Amen. I want to go back to the plane just for one second. None of us, I mean, I know I, I fly all the time, you know, pre-pandemic, pre had been up there since the pandemic, but we fly, we get on the plane. Mm -hmm. Hey, how y'all doing? We never think about this big, heavy thing. I never think about how is it going to get off the ground. Right. It's a plane. It ain't a bird. It ain't Superman. It's a plane. <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny here. But we don't think about this heavy plane coming down. We got so much complete faith in the pilot. But I want y'all to understand something. We got to have faith in the ultimate pilot, which is Jesus Christ. Y'all hear what I'm saying? We got to have faith in God. When we have that, that complete faith in God, you don't worry about too much of nothing. That's so right. we can trust a pilot. We can trust other, God, other cars on the road, the drivers, but we can't trust God. Um, I got a problem <laughs> with that. Y'all better wake up. Amen. Amen. So, listen, so, so think about it, okay? So look, this, listen, we need, we need faith, people of God, because, and that was number, that was number seven, because I was talking about seven um, types of faith. That was number seven. So we talked about weak faith, temporary faith, um, then we talked about active faith, strong faith, and great faith, unfinished faith, and then perfect faith. So listen, so we got to be unshakable. Y'all better hear this. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we, we got to have faith that, and trust that everything that we need, every area in our life that God has us, we can't be shaken when things happen. We can't be shaken because the money looks funny. We can't be shaken because a relationship is starting to go south. We can't be shaken for what a doctor has said. We can't be shaken um, for what the ache that we have in our knee or our back or our foot or our head or our heart. We can't be, or our fingers or whatever. We can't be shaken. Listen, faith makes claim to determination and strength. 
when you have faith, you have to get this bulldog tenacity attitude. I'm always saying that. Listen, when mm -hmm. you know that you're unshakable, you get such a bulldog tenacity that you know what? I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm coming after what I want. I'm going after what God said is for me. I'm going to claim it. I'm going to move in and nothing's going to stop me. Talk to me right quick about P.I.T. Vicky because I can go on and on when with you, that one. <laughs> Yeah, when you talk about that bulldog tenacity, um, a lot of people are intimidated by that. <clears throat> but when, when they see people with that bulldog tenacity, that, that really strong faith, um, there's no need to be intimidated, intimidated by it, admire it and, mm -hmm. and, and try to ask God to help you be more like that. All because right. when you get that bulldog tenacity, you mm -hmm. ain't letting go. You ain't letting go of God. You're going to hold on to him and, and carry him with you everywhere you go. So I just say that because it's like Holy Spirit just for, for one second was, was just, using the word intimidation because the enemy wants you to be intimidated there is no need to be grab onto it and ask god to give you that bulldog tenacity so that nothing can shake your faith yeah. nothing can move your faith nothing can can draw there will be no thin line there will be a border that will be so thick that you will never cross over to the side of fear because your faith is strong and anchored in God. So that bulldog tenacity, you got it, Apostle. I think I'm, I think I, I think I'm, I think I'm at the point where I have, I have, I've, I'm getting it. I'm not gonna say I got it, but I'm getting it. And it's it it's it tends to intimidate people, but that's not our intent. Our intent is to show you that our walk with God is so strong. Amen. And we are so sure that we are walking with the Lord that nothing that you do is going to pull us away from her, us. Not, I mean, pull us away from yeah, him. Yeah. Nothing you do is going to make us waver. Nothing you do is going to make us doubt who we are and whose we are That's and it. why we're here. That's that bulldog tenacity. And I, and I love that about you, Apostle. Okay, okay that's all I got to say about that. I'm going to speak that all of you and all of you that are watching is going to have that bulldog tenacity, that type of faith that Amen. will say, you know what, I have to claim it and have a determination that God is all going to be all right. She said, uh, Elder Vanessa said, me too, I'm getting there. I'm speaking that you guys are there. I'm going to speak that you we're all claiming you that it. are watching you. That's right. I'm proclaiming that you're there. I'm decreeing it. Amen. Listen, guys, when you're unshakable in your faith, uh, check this out. True, true, unshakable faith shows that you can see beyond the horizon. OK, you can Ooh, see beyond like the that. past hurts. You can see beyond the horizon, the past hurts, the past, the, your insecurities. You can see past the lack. You can see past I can'ts. You can see past the why means. You can see past the storms going somewhere. You can you can see past the viruses. And you can move forward to your destiny. In other words, when you are unshaken in your faith, it will allow you to just get past you and see straight to God. Okay? So I pray you all understood that. So as we're trying to get to the end, when we started out talking about there's a thin line between fear and faith, you got to be unshakable in your faith and not lean towards the fear line. Listen to this. Fear kills your desires and destroys your dreams. But faith builds hope, directs your steps, and creates a desire. I'm going to read this next part, then PIT, jump on in with me. Listen, fear will have you always looking at the storm. But if you can't walk in faith, if you are shaking in your faith, you will never be able to focus on the sunshine and no rain. Talk to me, PIT, what you got? I'm glad she said I claim it. That's right, Elder Vanessa. So when you were saying that about um, you can see beyond the horizon, I was thinking Holy Spirit uh, brought to my mind an obstacle course, <laughs> you know, an obstacle course, especially if you are challenging an opponent, you're going to go through the obstacle course to try to get to the red flag or the finish line. Right. Mm -hmm. So the um, so the horizon is where you're trying to get to and all these other things the hurt the storm. Uh, the virus, all of those are nothing more about than obstacles That's right. that are trying to block us from getting to that horizon. Yeah. 
And if we can look at it that way, and if we can face life that way, knowing that those obstacles are not always going to be there, we're going to go in with that tenacity and we're going to knock those obstacles down, or we're going to move around those obstacles, or we're going to push those obstacles out the way because we got to keep our eyes on the horizon and we got to keep moving forward. So many of us have hit brick walls Mm -hmm. and we've stopped and we have modeled and, 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 uh, and just, just had a pity party and whatnot. But then, you know, that wall ain't going to move until you knock it down or you move around it or you chisel in a door. You've got to do something to keep moving forward so that you can get to the horizon. But the obstacle course is exactly what God had showed me, a whole spirit has showed me is what, you know, is stopping us from doing so many things and stopping us from moving forward to our destiny. But if we keep our eyes on God, We keep our eyes on the horizon. We realize that those are nothing but temporary obstacles that are, that he has put in our way to make us stronger. You, you got to be strong. By the time you knock down a couple of walls, you done got, you you done got a whole lot stronger. By the time you done chiseled chiseled in some doors, you done got a whole lot stronger. So those obstacles are going to continue to come. They're going to continue to be there. We just got to know how to face it. And we just got to know how to move it out of our way so that we can see that horizon and our faith is what's going to help us knock go. down those doors and, and move chisel in those walls and move those things out the way. Our faith is going to help us. Uh-huh. He's going to keep putting those obstacles there until our faith get to the point where he wants our faith to be. Yes. And that's what I was going to say. If you hadn't have said it, our faith is what it's going to take to get us past all of that. I hope y'all heard that our faith is what's going to get us past all of that. So when we look at that thin line, amen, we look at that thin line. So we have to understand that, um, how do I put this? Fear puts us in a defeated position. Did Mm -hmm. I say that already? Did I say that already? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. It comes to kill. I mean, it comes to kill our desires, steal our dreams, destroy our future. That's why the Bible says that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But our faith, people of God, but when we have faith, when we have faith, sometimes we can just sit back and trust that, you know what, whatever the enemy tried to come to steal, kill, and destroy, all I got to do is sit here and watch God just move beyond that and then move my mind beyond that. The word says in Isaiah 54, 17, and everybody knows that scripture, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Amen. Amen. We already talked about Proverbs 3, verse 5, verse 5 and 6, but, so, but the problem is so often, if we don't have the faith to believe that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, when we got true faith, that unfinished faith, come on, that perfect faith, even for some, at least a little bit of weak faith, you got something. When we have some type of faith, we're saying, you know what? No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. It might, it might be prepared to, to, to take me down. It might come against me. However, it will not prosper. We got to understand that when it comes to faith, y'all, that we got to understand that we, we've got to make sure that we are in a place to say, you know what faith is? I am what God says I am. When we have unshakable faith, we're saying, if you can't help me, then don't try to stop me. Just get out of my way. Don't try to block me because I've got such faith that nothing is going to deter me. When you got that unshakable faith, you're saying, you know what, what God has for me is for me. And you and nobody else can stop it. Y'all catch that? When you have unshakable faith, you saying, if if God did it before, he going to do it again. When you have unshakable faith, you're saying, my faith is going to grow as I use it. Faith without works is dead. I'm going somewhere with this part, y'all. Faith is about making a step, even when it looks all hopeless. But faith without works is dead. So if, if if you want to be unshakable, well, then you got to put some works to some stuff. Did y'all catch that? (laughs) You got to put some work to it. Uh, I think P.I.T. Vicky said earlier, if you ain't putting nothing to it, you get nothing out of it. Amen. What you, you want to add something to that before I give them my conclusion right quick, because time has moved, but we're going to finish this today. The only thing that I could add is if you look at faith as a shield, okay, a shield of protection, If your shield is made out of a strong metal, 
let's say like the medal that Iron Man, not Iron Man, well, the medal that Captain America uses for his <laughs> shield. Okay. Nothing can penetrate it. So if you have unshakable faith, if you have that strong, strong faith, no weapon is going to penetrate that. When that weapon penetrates it, if that weapon would penetrate your shield, then that weapon is what is going to distract you, hmm. cause you to waver, cause you to shift, call you to move, call you to duck. But All if you right got now. that strong faith, you're mm -hmm. going to put that shield out there. You're going to move forward. And no matter yes. what's hitting it, you're going to keep on moving. But if yes. your shield, your faith is not made out of a solid, strong hmm. material, if it's made out of a piece of paper, that... Hmm. That um, weapon is going to penetrate and it's going to hit you. It's not going to protect you. So if you Come look on. at that shield as being God in your yes. faith, nothing is going to penetrate it. Absolutely nothing. nothing. And, and, and it, it, it kind of makes your work a little bit easier when you have that strong faith because you know, you know, you know, you know that everything is going to be all right because you know he's in control. But yes, if you yes. don't have that strong faith, you, like I said, you're going to be working a little harder, ducking, moving, shifting, wavering, trying to get out the way because you just don't mm. have enough faith to know that God is going to take care of you and protect you and move you forward and move you through it. Yeah, I hear that? Stop ducking. Just have the kind of faith that you need, that God kind of faith. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Captain America, I got that one. I got my shield up. The Holy Ghost, amen. <laughs> there you go, amen. Amen. Now, guys, I know we laugh a lot, but guess what? We want to keep it humorous, but yet we want to be serious because we're in an hour, because we're finished with this, but we're in an hour where people are being shaken so much by all the whims of life, all the tactics of the enemy, by every situation that they're going through, they're being shaken to the core, to the point that they feel like there is no hope. They feel like nothing's going to matter tomorrow. They're feeling like, what can I, what can I, why am I doing this? Why is nothing happening? Why is nothing changing? Listen, stop being shaken by the things of life. Life by itself will cause you to be shaken. However, if you are unshakable in your faith, it should not cause you to be shifted. The things that's shaking you should, I mean, the things that you see shouldn't cause you to be shaken because you have to be unshakable in your faith. Um, the Bible talks about we are built to last in a sense. So what we have to understand in our closing, because time does move, um, we need to be encouraged and strengthened to the point to say, you know what, God, I may have had that mustard seed faith. And then I finally got past that to get at least a little bit of weak faith. But God doesn't want us to be weak-minded people of God. He wants us to grow. But faith grows as we use it. I said that, I think, at the beginning, faith grows as we use it. If we never use our faith, we will, it will never grow. That mustard seed will stay a mustard seed, except you put some water on it, except you put something on it for it to grow, except you put action to it. So um, faith, apart from God, is not faith. Mm -hmm. I hear you, Holy Spirit. He said faith, apart from God, is not faith, which means you've got to know that God is in the midst of situations. Talk to me right quick, P.I.T. Um, I just wanted to reemphasize, I think the first day we were talking about fear, you said fear is forgetting everything already revealed to you. Uh -huh. So if you know the promises of God, and God does reveal those promises to us in his word, if you, if you really know that, if you really know those promises, then your fear should be less. Yes. If you want to know what you need to do in terms of getting rid of the fear and you want to know more about his promises then we've got to get more into the word and we've got to yes. read and study his word even the more um there i mean I, god did not i god does not want us to be fearful mm -hmm. we have to reverence him of course 
but there is nothing here on earth that he want us to be fearful about. And as long as we've got enough faith yes, and it's strong enough, there is absolutely nothing stopping us yes. from getting through our breakthroughs, our strongholds, whatever it is that we're dealing with. That's if you've got the faith and you know who he is, there is nothing stopping us from getting through That's or coming it. out of whatever we're dealing with. That's it. Did y'all catch that? There is nothing that will stop us from dealing with or coming out of what we're dealing with. So let's stop being shaken and let's have that unshakable faith. Let's stop walking the thin line between fear and faith and just walk in the line of faith. Amen. Let's not Amen. look down, but keep looking up. Okay. Um, as I said at the beginning of this topic, Satan's main tactic <clears throat> is to shake your faith and create all kinds of fears and doubts. He tries to make you doubt your standing with God. He tries to make you doubt that God cares what happens to you. And he tries to make you doubt that God will not fulfill his promises. But because we know God is not a God that he should lie, we can't keep listening to the fear. We just got to walk in the faith, believing that God can and he will do all things but fail. Okay? Mm -hmm. Last thing, I said before, faith talks, but fear walks. I mean, fear talks, but faith walks. You've got to decide if you're going to keep allowing fear to talk to you or you're going to use that faith whether it's weak, whether it's temporary, whether it's strong, whether it's great, whether it's unfinished, you got to use whatever type of faith you have got to use to make sure that you get to perfect faith eventually. Amen. Let God perfect some things in you and everything else will be okay. Come on, Facebook, talk to us. What you get from today? Okay. Do you have anybody? I know Elder Vanessa said awesome teaching. Uh, Anybody else want to tell us what you guys got from today? Listen, listen, we are finished with uh, having unshakable faith, but whatever topics that you need, whatever you need as encouragement, let us know. We are here for you. Yes, I know the Lord says start this fresh or live talk, but it's not about me. It's not about PIT, uh, Vicki. It's about you all. I don't ever want to speak anything that's not helping you. Amen. So, Send me an in inbox me. Let me know what's on your mind. Let me know what you need. What, let us know what you need for us to be talking about. Amen. Uh, we Amen. thank God for those of you that joined, the, that, that grabbed hold of the book, uh, the one that we just finished, uh, How to Reach Your Full Potential. We thank you guys for just staying with us with this. Couple of announcements. Times go, time goes so fast. And I'm still waiting for everybody else to tell me what they got. Uh, July 4th, guys, we are having a, a baptism on the lawn. It's open to anybody that's outside. We're going to put the tents up. Listen, if you yourself want to be rebaptized or have never been baptized, or you know someone who might want to be baptized, let us know by July the 18th so we can get information to you. Amen. Got a form that you need to fill out. And we just want to explain, give you something that explains uh that explains baptism. I don't ever want to take anybody in the water and they don't understand what they're doing. That's why so many have, I'm going to say it went down dry devils and come back up wet devils because they did not understand baptism. I did say it. I know somebody just got mad. But that's July oh, so what was that? Uh huh. Well, I was going to tell you to say the date again because all I heard was July 4th. July 20th. July 24th. I'm sorry. Okay. You know I'm dealing with this thing up here in the roof of my mouth. July 24th, guys, at 11 a.m. Inbox us. Please inbox me on uh on our on our on our, our page. Amen. Apostle Gepay and Healing Hands of Love. That's the page that most of you are on, or even on my personal page. Inbox us if you're interested or you know someone. Uh, July 31st is my KCIFM, my Kingdom Connections International Fellowship of Ministries. It's open to pastors, uh, pastors in training, elders, ministers, amen, um, uh, ministry leaders. We It's just we gather and we just discuss things. We talk about building and growing in ministry. Amen. That uh, That's also on Zoom for now. The meeting ID is 895, I mean, excuse me, 898. One three zero seven zero five four five. That's eight nine eight 
1307-0545. And the uh, passcode is leadership, all caps, leadership. As I said, if you are a pastor, co-pastor, assistant pastor, pastor in training, elder, minister, ministry leader, you're welcome to join this beginning in October. It will be a closed session. So we want you to get on in now so that you can see what we do and then see if you're interested, amen, in joining us. This will never be on Facebook. I have to keep saying it, it will not be on Facebook or tonight. Join us for Word Empowerment. Uh, if you tap your screen, it will come up. We are on the um, Spiritual Warfare series. Tonight we are talking about uh, uh, seeing and uh, dealing with that spirit of confusion, the spirit of fear, and I can't remember what the other one was. What was the other one? Um, I'm sorry, Apostle, I don't remember. Okay, but y'all come on in half. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen 6.30 prayer call, uh, 7 o'clock is our word empowerment. We pray God's grace upon you, God's peace upon you. Thank you, uh, to daughter Tamika, uh, daughter Elder Vanessa, daughter Michelle, uh, Sister Gail. Um, do you have anybody else on your side? Um, You've already called out the names that I see. Okay. Okay. Well, we thank you guys again for, for joining us. We pray that uh, you were blessed by the word. Um, we're going to ask uh, PIT Vicky to pray us out. Again, guys, let us know if there are topics that you want us to cover. Amen. Amen. All right. Grace and peace to you all. Well, we just thank you for your teachings today. Lord, we're just asking and praying that you help us to not allow fear to put us in a defeated position. We pray, Father, that you will help us draw closer to you. Help us strengthen our faith, oh, Heavenly Father, so that we can be sure that you are in control in, in leading us and guiding us, Father. Father, I pray that you will bless every household that is represented on this, um, this recording. I'm praying, Father, that you will bless those that are, will be watching it in the future. Thank you for our apostle. Continue to bless her. And we just, you know, we just love you so, Father. We pray that you will just continue to humble us and continue to help us grow. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you guys with the love of the Lord. For those that have been with us a while, if you want us to go back tonight, let us know. Amen. We want to be a blessing. So if you want us to go back tonight, which was what, Tuesday night, 9 p.m.? Kind of late, but yes. um, a lot of people are off work. But um, yes. just let us know what you want. Amen. We'll go from there. Mm -hmm. Thank you again, uh, PIT Vicky. I know you got to go back to work. Love you much. Grace Love you too. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, God.